About a month or so ago, I made a video on something called Type Dict. It's this really nice thing, it's sort of like a custom dictionary kind of thing, where you could supply types for your keys, you can have, you know, set keys, you can set required keys, you can even have, you know, set values for certain things. It was just a really nice tool for unifying dictionaries if you knew uh, what type you were going to use. And I had a lot of comments in that video talking about pedantic. Now this is not something that I had heard of previously. I'd actually never heard of pedantic before, um, which is amazing actually considering how many uh, downloads it gets a month. It gets like 4 million or something, so I don't know how I hadn't heard of it. But I looked it up and I played around with it for a bit and it's actually really nice, so I wanted to share it with other people who perhaps hadn't heard of it. So Pedantic is or it's sort of like TypeDict Plus in a way. It has actual strict type enforcement, um, which is actually quite nice, but it also has you know a lot of extra features like validators um, and configuration that you can do, some of which we're gonna be talking about in this video. So Pedantic is quite expansive um, and I wanna keep you know videos to a decent length. So I'm going to be talking about the things that are probably most commonly used or the most common use cases pedantic, how most people would likely use it. However, before we talk about that, let's talk about data scraping and how IP Royal can help you out. IP Royal is a proxy service provider offering a wide range of solutions for residential and data center needs alike. Their proxy servers act as intermediaries, replacing your IP address with one of theirs before forwarding on your request. When the destination servers send their response, it goes back through the proxy server before coming to you, meaning the destination servers have no idea who you are. This is why IP Royal's global network of rotating residential proxies come into their own. Having a constant stream of fresh IPs at your disposal allows you to evade timeouts and bans while gathering data, and being able to get them from virtually any country in the world means you can access even the hardest sources to reach. It also means you can focus in on only the geolocations you're interested in, ensuring you get exactly the data you want to get. There are other benefits to using proxies too, such as the ability to access geo-restricted content, avoid censorship barriers, and create tools to ensure you get high demand items at fair prices, beating resellers at their own game. And if that wasn't enough, IP Royal provides a 24-7, 365 support line if you ever run into problems. If that sounds like the exact sort of thing you're looking for, click the link in the description and use code CARBRA at checkout for 30% percent off IP Royal static and rotating residential proxies. The deal won't last long though, so make sure you head over before you miss your chance. That's code CARBRA at checkout for 30% off. Now you've all got undone that, we can install Pedantic in our environment. I've already got it installed, but we can do pip install Pedantic, or you can do pip install with Pedantic, and it installs itself and the typing extensions, which is installed by quite a few things anyway, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. And to actually use Pedantic, we need to create something called a model, which functions relatively similar to a data class, though it's not a data class. That is important to note. Uh, so we could do from Pedantic import base model. If you do have any issues, I'm not sure if this is exclusive to VS Code, but if you do have any issues where it's not like giving you, um, you know, proper suggestions or typing information or whatever, you can do from Pedantic.main import base model and it'll work just fine. Um, I had that issue when I was testing this out, it was slightly weird, but whatever. Uh, and we create a model inheriting our base model. So our model is going to have our name, equals, which is a string, age, which is an int, and our jobs, which is a list of string that I'm going to default to an empty list. My tried and true kind of example uh, profile thing there. And then we can create our new instance of a model by calling profile and then give it a series of keyword arguments. It doesn't work with positional arguments, so do keep that in mind. Um, and if I pass jobs as software engineer, and if I just print P, uh, whoopsie daisies, that's the, not the right thing I wanted, and now it's gone weird, god damn it. <laughs> I don't know why Bash does that sometimes. Well, it'd be ZSH actually, not Bash, but there you go. So as you can see, it's printing out all our names and the values for them. Uh, the default string representation doesn't you know, follow the quote unquote standard that is defined. Well, it's not really defined anywhere, but there is sort of a standard where you have the class name and in brackets, um, you would have this information. So if you did want to do that, you'd have to define your own wrapper. Um, but it's not particularly the biggest deal. Uh, the other way you could construct the class is, say if we had um, a response, uh, that was say the name, I cannot type, was Ethan, and then the age was 24. I'm not gonna bother with the jobs this time, I can't be asked. And then we could do P equals profile, 
and then we can use our double asterisk operator to unpack the dictionary and then pass in the rest. So this is sort of like simulating an API response of sorts uh, and you can build a model perfectly fine through that and it will give you, you know, the name, the age and as you can see the jobs defaults to an empty list there, which is really nice. Uh, the other nice but slightly odd thing uh, about Pedantic is that you can actually do type coercion uh, for you. So say for example if you passed um, age as a string it would actually be able to understand that it was supposed to be an int. So if you do p.age, oops, I need to do type to demonstrate that, didn't I? You can see it's a class of int. So even though it gets passed in as a string, it then converts it out. If we were to do something like meme here, it would then give you an error, um, a slightly bizarre looking error, but it would give you an error saying that value is not a valid integer type equals type error to integer, uh, and it will give you the field's um, name as well. The same goes for something like the job, so if I did actually bother um, and we passed it through as a tuple instead, uh, remembering that this is a dict, not a class constructor, it would then uh, pass it through as a list, so it would actually convert it to a list from a tuple. Um, I don't know if there's a way to disable that, but do know that that is the default behavior. The next thing I want to talk about is something called aliases. Now, oftentimes APIs aren't written um, or unprogrammed to return their data in snake case, uh, which is Pythonic. So you either, you know, normally if you were to do a data class, you'd have to you know, either manually convert them or you'd have to write your model using camel case or you'd have to do some weird crap and it's just really annoying. But Pedantic has that handled for you uh, through the class configurer or the model configurer. So you provide class config in here and then you provide alias generator and then you provide a function. So in our case, it's gonna be called to camel case and with any luck, it's still on my paste buffer. It is, fantastic. Uh, so this um, method just converts, you know, uh, snake case to camel case. If we were to have, say, my jobs, uh, instead of just jobs and if you to provide my jobs in here this is a naming conflict so normally you'd have to either convert this to be snake case or you'd have to set this as you know, camel case and be non-pathonic but with pedantic it just works in the words of todd howard you can see that it's actually set that to be my jobs there and even if it did use snake case it would still work as expected the function is perfectly able to handle it it all works itself out and it all assigns itself to the right thing, um, which is actually really nice and saves a lot of effort. So I thought that'd be something I would show off. And I also wanted to show off the configurer as well because there are a lot of options in here. And this is sort of what I was talking about where there's a lot to it. There's a lot of options. Um, but the only other option uh, that I wanna show you is related to the final feature that I wanna show you, which is validation. So this is a big thing that Python data classes don't have. Atras does have this, um, you know, type dict doesn't, which is another reason why people prefer uh, pedantic to type dict. The validators are, you know, very simple. Uh, they simply just take the input and validate it against a certain criteria. So say for example, if we wanted to check that the age was greater than zero when we instantiated the class, <clears throat> we could, uh, import our validator decorator uh, from Pedantic and then we can use that and then provide a string name of the field, so in this case age. And then this can be anything, uh, so we'll just call this age greater than zero. We then pass the class because the validator decorator turns it into a class method, so we pass the class, not an instance, and then we pass the value, which in this case is going to be an int, and then we return an int. Um, and then we say if value is less than zero, we can raise a value error and say age must be greater uh, than zero. Otherwise, we return the value back out. That's very important. Um, so now, if we were to do this, we would see uh, the uh, all the type checking and coercion happens first. So by the time it reaches this validator, age is already set as an integer. But if I were to set this as to minus one, we would now get our custom error saying that age must be greater than zero. So these validators you can think of as an extension to the stuff that Pedantic already does. So it already checks the types, you're just adding extra things, you know, 
as and when you want to. Uh, you could also you know, check that the name is of a particular length or that you know, there's at least one job or you know, something like that. But ultimately the validation is entirely your call. You can just use this decorator and create any class methods you want out of it. One other really useful thing to keep in mind that I totally didn't forget the first time around and I'm inserting this after the fact is the validate assignment uh, configurer. So normally, if you were to have, you know, say, you, uh, you have your thing and you, it's all valid, so we'll change this back to 24 as an integer, and it goes through all the validators and everything, but then what if you change it to, say, minus one after the fact, and then print p.age? What would happen is that it actually lets you do that. It doesn't run the validators again on assignment unless you provide the validate uh, assignment config argument and set it to true. And now it will do. It will say, you know, if you're assigning it, then it will double check to make sure that it's actually a valid value. And if it's not, it will give you an error. I don't really know why this isn't on by default. Like surely you would always want this, um, but it is at least something that you can enable um, if you want to. My guess is that it's probably quite a recent feature and that they didn't want to do like a breaking change so they had it as an option that was disabled by default. That's the sort of thing you know I do if I have something like that. Um, I imagine it would become default at some point in the future. But whether it's you know default or not it is absolutely worth remembering about this validate assignment in my opinion. Models aren't the only thing that Pedantic can help you with. There are instances where maybe you would want a normal function to you know, check its types to make sure that it's actually using the right types. But Dantic has you covered with this as well. So if I just load a new file, say top2.py, and then we do from pedantic import validate argument. So it is a different um, decorator, so do keep that in mind. And we use our decorator on an add function that checks to make sure that it's an int, that x is an int and y is an int. Obviously in reality, they could also be floats, but just bear with me here. And then we return x plus y. And then we have add 3, 5, or we can you know, print add 3, 5. And if I run tut2.py, we can see that it runs perfectly fine. Uh, if we pass in a string, it still does the type coercion. So now if I just do print uh, type of x in here, it actually converts it to an int before it gets in here. So it does exactly the same thing as it would normally do for your model you know, uh, fields. But if you pass in something that is not possible, like a meme, then it will you know, flag exactly the same errors. So this allows you to bring Pedantic's model uh, type checking behavior into normal functions as well. Whether or not you would want to install Pedantic in its entirety, if you just wanted to use it for this, is your call. There are other libraries that do it. I haven't used them, so I can't vouch for their goodness i guess um, but if you're already using pedantic for other purposes then it's worth using this if you feel like you want to but yeah that's all i wanted to show off in this video there is a lot more to pedantic as i've said at the start so make sure to read up on the docs if you're interested this is generally all the things that i could see people using this for kind of a lot or at least this is kind of the main use case i suppose you know especially if you're building apis and you want to create programmatical models for them you would more than likely use pedantic you would have your aliases uh, you would use your double as a uh, double asterisk uh, unpacking operator you have your validators you'd have all this that, and the other and you'd be golden and pedantic yeah takes a lot of the boilerplate out of that for you which is really nice of course if you found the video helpful at any point then consider like it to let me know and maybe consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like it if you have any questions or maybe any ideas of videos you want me to do in the future make sure to leave a comment in the section below i read them all so your feedback is greatly appreciated if you want to support this channel monetarily you can do so in one of two ways the first by becoming a patron using the link in the description or you can become a member using the join button below one pound a month on either and you can be on this screen like these people and i will see you in the next video where i do something else i don't know what that will be um but yeah see you for that